you need to go to your assignments and let's see what are the questions over there for today's Right, A one. Let me just keep walking there. So keywords are clear to everyone, right? Next, we see something called as comments. Comments. Okay. Now let's understand comments in very simple terms. See, whenever I say anything, like if I say print five, that's it. Five is being printed. Okay. Or let it be anything. 5, 10, 15, 20, anything, whatever you print or any string or anything, you want to print your name, you can write over there like, I'm writing my name, right, so printing, printing it gets printed over there, right, uh, number, variables, assignment, data times, alright, so these are the, some of the commands what we are doing. Right, you can go with the dash right now. Now, what it comments is like it, it starts from a hashtag, right? In Python, I'm talking about, right? It starts with a hashtag, and these are the lines which are not executed, right? Which are never executed basically. Now, executed in the terms that it, these are not going to convert and being generated the outputs, and again, right? So, you will you are not going to get any output for any of the comments. So, comments can be made with the hashtags. Just a single hashtag can be used for making any comment, right? So if I say comment and then I say print something, let's say print three inside the comment. So if I say like this uh, in the terms, when I run this, I'm not going to get any of the output. See, this is the input five, but no output has been generated with that reference, okay? But the same thing if I write without the comment, would be giving me the result. Four will be giving me the result but what if I say hashtag 4 that is a comment no output clear to everyone speak out quickly uh, I have to ask okay I can see yes from Parth what about the rest of them yes, sir, yes, sir. Rajesh Darshan is there okay right okay fine yes sir all right so these comments are of two types one is called as multiple and the second one is a single one right single is i think like uh, you can say on uh, this is a single line comment all right now when you say about multi-line comments we'll say obviously right this is a so it should be like this multi line comment right now this can be placed where anywhere where you want right basically these are used to describe your codes that's it there is no such purpose of writing any comments right so only the purpose is just to write and define your codes over there throughout the things that's the important one now let's see so comments are made using that, right? So in place, if you are using the marked out options and the headings in the Jupyter Notebook, in that case, the comments are nothing but the headings, right? So what do you see in the black bold letters, comments, and the keywords. Now let's see some kind of operators and all the things, right? So what do you see here is, Till the six hash, like in the first heading, heading one, heading two, heading three, heading four, heading five, heading six, that's it. Okay, like in HTML, you might have seen uh, there are the six kind of headings, like from heading one to heading six, right? So the first one is the very biggest one, and the, then it goes like smaller, 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 and again smaller, right? And that similar cases, like in the first hashtag is the biggest one, that is heading one, this is the heading six, five, four, three, two, one, like that, right? So let's see of this as the operators now the operators what we are going to discuss like 
Uh, today we are going to see assignment operators and arithmetic operators. Okay. All right. So let's see that. We'll say it as arithmetic, arithmetic and assignment operators. Okay. All right. So discuss this. Now, arithmetic operators are something like where you can see which have basically the common arithmetic options, common arithmetic um, calculations like plus, minus, multiplication, divisions, uh, integer divisions, exponentiations, values, and all those things. Like if I say uh, 3 plus 4, what would be the value? Like 7, obviously, right? So this is a plus module. Or you can say the um, addition operator, right? So similarly, 6 minus 7 would be giving me some results that is negative 1, right? Exactly. That is a subtraction one. Okay, like that. Just a second. If I say 4 multiplied by 3, right, that is 12, right? Now 4 divided by 4, that is 1.0 results, right? So plus, minus, multiplication, divisions are quite simple, very easy. Okay, now see. Now there are three different more terms, that is integer division, that is called as uh, exponentiations, and that is called as modulus. Now we'll discuss this. Before that, we'll be discussing three types of things, that is called as integer, float, and string. A complex all right so let's discuss the integer float and complex type these are the types of the numbers okay in Python we have three kind of types of the numbers that is integer float and complex now integer are something which we say as a whole numbers so all the whole numbers which comes we will say that these are the integers right quite similar to everyone okay no problems So we'll define integer is equals to nothing but the whole numbers. Okay. Now, when it comes the term of the float, so inside the whole numbers, what it comes from zero to numbers like positive, negative, and uh, uh, everything apart from the decimals, right? And the float will say it as everything real numbers including fraction, exponentiation values and all then it comes the complex real type so complex we say combination of we say combination of real plus imaginary numbers okay Okay, yeah. there we see complexes like. This. Now let's see their examples like what exactly are the integer numbers and how we have floats and how we have the complex. Okay, <clears throat> sorry. Now, let's say if I have x, y, and z, I'm saying this is minus 45. Okay, that is an integer without any decimal points, always. I say 65.3 uh, that is a float obviously that is a float right now I say 34 J that is a complex number what is the J J is the imaginary part right so in the complex you have basically a real and imaginary part that's it what is given okay so let's run this and for looking on to the type if you want to check that whether the three kind are of what type like integer float or what right so for that we'll be using a function called as type function so I'll say type of x type of y and the type of z and i found it to be integer float and complex so x is an integer y is a float and the z is a complex type okay now uh, we were at the arithmetic operations right so this was clear to everyone right after this just a moment After this division, there comes the operators like 4 to the power of 2. 
Four square. Sixteen. Point zero. Okay. Next I say it as like if sixteen is divided by four, leaving the result as four point zero. That is in a float. But if I want the uh, values in integer, what I'll do is sixteen divided divided by four. That gives result in the four. That is an integer. Now that operator what we have used is called as a flow division or you can say it as the um, integer divisions right okay moving next now the last operator for the arithmetic one is like if i say 100 when divided by 3 leaves the remainder as 1 okay because 100, you will divide it by 3, 33, 99, and then it obviously it is 100 minus 99, that is equals to 1. Clear to everyone? Yes, sir. So now in the terms like if I look onto the Z, where it is, yeah, here. This is 34Z. Now how can I say that this is a complex number, right? You might have some doubts like where are the real parts and where are the imaginary parts in this number? The starting numbers was easy, right? That is integer at the float that is quite similar. That's not having any difference. Whole numbers and real numbers, obviously we understand. But where are these real numbers and where are these imaginary numbers? Let's see. Here. So if I see the Z, that is 34Z, 34J. Here the real number is 0, 0.0 and the imaginary number is 34.0. Right. So basically the complex numbers are always in the form of A plus BJ. So here BJ is equals to 34J. So you can say B that is imaginary number is equals to 34. And A is obviously 0 because there is nothing over there, right? So 0 plus something would be giving you the same results. Right. So understood, right? What is a real number? Uh, sorry. What are the real parts and imaginary part for the numbers? Okay. All right. Moving next. Now, so operators are clear, right? Arithmetic operators are clear. Next, we go to see the assignment operators. Uh, more over with the assignments, let's go and see with the comparison of the people. Now, with the name of the comparison, you can easily understand that here the things are being compared basically. Okay. That is, if you want to compare between two numbers, if you want to compare between two objects, if you want to compare between two strings, so you can use this easily. The operator, you can use the operators here are like good stuff of operators, what you can use. Let's see the things. So it is CO. Okay, so it is like, if I say 4 is greater than 5, obviously it is a false result. So comparison is going to give you results in the boolean, boolean basically in the true or false, that's it. So you are going to get results in the boolean operators. Okay, 5 is less than 6. Obviously, it is a true statement. Right? Next, if something is equals to something, we don't write it as like 5 is equals to 5. This operator is for assignment. Like, I can say that something is equals to 5. That's it. That is, I am adding the values over there in this C. Right? So, if I say C is equals to 5, that means 
the c is holding a value of 5 and that exactly is called as a variable okay that we'll understand later on let's see so if for uh, finding the equalities what you'll use is 4 is equal equals to 4 that means the left hand side and the right hand side is equal now right so equal equals to specify the equality signature and i get the same results if i say 4 is not equals to 5 obviously it is again correct okay like the not equals to we write in the mathematics same like that okay. and if i say 3 is greater than equals to 5 so here are two conditions basically first one is 3 is less than oh sorry greater than equals to right now you need to understand whether 3 is uh, having the two conditions which condition is the correct one two of the conditions have been given either the greater than or the equal than right so first it will check whether 3 is greater than 5 or not so I see the results coming out as false. Then again, the second condition will be checked whether three three is equals to five or not. So again, the conditions are false, right? If the conditions are false, you are going to get the result as false. Now, what if I make something as three is less than five? I see a true result. Even if there is one true result, you will be getting the results as true. But if you have no true results, obviously you are going to get false. Clear to everyone? All right. Yes. Okay. Hmm. Yes, sir. So next we have to understand some of the modules like some of the important you can say libraries which should be used right so uh, before going to the li libraries we go up with the modules some of the basic ones like the date time modules the uh, calendar modules and like we will be getting questions in the first assignment with that right so let's see if i say for the calendar module For the calendar module, you need to uh, let's make it down. Okay, so whatever the module you are going to use is, you can use to import those things. Uh, Path is having a doubt. Yes, Path, you can ask what, what doubt you are having. Uh, sir, there was a small doubt there. Mm -hmm. Ask. Uh, sir, sir, there was like 4 factorial is equal to 5, but I didn't really got that condition, sir, and it, it, it displayed true. Yeah, okay, fine. See, see that is like uh, use of 3 factorial 4 or sorry, 3 factorial 4. Okay, e equals to 4. See, uh, when I say that 3 is equal equals to 4, I use double equals there, right? But when I say 3 is not equals to 4, I have to use that factorial signature symbol. Okay, that factorial stands that okay, this is not sign, right? Okay, sir. Not equals to, we use uh, factorial equals to, right? So here the results yes, will be 3 is not equals to 4 is exactly the correct statement, that is, it is true. Okay, sir. Got, got it. Got it. All right. Thank you. So we have calendar, right? So uh, we have important it. Okay, fine. Now let's see what all are the functions which are there in the calendar. So we can say it's print the directory of the calendar. So we have got the directory of the calendar where we have day name, different local error, first weekday, the month length and all those things. Okay, now let's see. 
then sometimes like you would be getting some good questions like uh, let's say in an in any interview like you, if you say um, the interviewer asks you right what is your birthday right you say something this 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 is date right now it will say like you have some seconds over there right to go through and to print out your uh, print not uh, you can say on to bring your things on the screen right bring your things on the screen like let's say in which uh, date your country got independent like easily one easy question so that is 15th august Let's say it as 1947, right? Now, if you have been asked to find out that which was the day of 15th August 1941, 1947, anyone can say what day it was from Monday to Sunday. Hmm. You will be googling it and then you'll be saying anything, right? So obviously, you can go with the programming with the things, right? So you want a calendar basically of the month, which month it is, in which month August comes. Quick. Yeah. And then we can say on the year. That is 1947. So month is 8 and the year is 1947. Right? That is our requirement for now. Right? To uh, generate the uh, calendar. Right? So easily we can say that basically we want to print a calendar of a month where the month is 8 and the year is this so uh, let's index out of range just a moment This module working, yeah, it's working. Is this so? Yes. Mm. So, sorry, that has to be uh, year in the first and then the month, right? So you can see like the calendar is there of August 1947 in front of you and you can find the 15th so date over there that is comes on the Friday. Okay, so you can use the weekday or any other model to, uh, or you can say this model, the other functions you can use, right? Because there are a lot of functions to go through, right? So what I have done is from the calendar, I have gone through the month module and I have to month function and I have taken the year and the one now if you have been asked to print a complete calendar of India let's say if 2021 is coming the like in one and a half months we'll be having 2021 right so if you want to print the calendar of 2021 obviously how what you can do is we can just write easily the things that is print the calendar dot the complete calendar of like year so year is 2021 so you find the calendar of 2021 so things are easy when you use modules with it. okay now next just a moment variables we have to discuss So you can use with the things right in the assignment question you will be getting it now let's say uh, if you want to see that what is your current age right you want to make a program which can 
give your current age uh, how you'll take what you do is basically you will take the input of the person right so for that we have an input function so inside the input function always you have to write the things in the codes we'll discuss the these codes are nothing but the string let's say enter age oh sorry enter both here okay and then these are the things right you will find it right so what i'll say is you are comma the current year which is 2020 minus the age years old so if you have guys see if you have any of the numeric value always try to write after the code so i complete the codes put a comma and then write again put a comma and then write the codes okay there are different ways of writing it now there would be a problem here if i run this and i say that the birth year let's say if something like let's say 1947 even right so 1947 so I'll find an error that is unsupported operand types for integer and string, right? So there are two different types it is saying. In the second line, uh, you are using two different types. One is the integer, what you can see is as 2020 is the integer and the age is nothing but the string as I said that in the input, however, whatever you take in the input box are always a string if you are not mentioning any different, uh, some particular type like C math or anything, okay? So let's see it. So what you have to do is you have to convert this total thing in the integer that will be called as here as the integer. If I run this, I say 1947. So you are 73 years old. Okay. Now if someone has born on let's say 2015, so you are five years old. Right, so that is, you can calculate the things according to the years basically. If you want to calculate it through months, you can even do that, right? I discuss variables and strings. The variables are something which have values or which are the names which are having values. That's a very simple thing, right? Like if I say A equals to Apple, B equals to Bob, something like so. so A is basically having a uh, word of Apple, B is having a word of something, C is having a word of something, right? So every uh, of the variable, what you will be making, you would be storing some values over there. Like if I say uh, the W is equals to some number, right? So whenever I say print W, I'll get the result that is having a number. Okay, like that. These are the variables, nothing but things right so you can print as like uh, v is equals to comma v that is v equals to some number okay like that and strings you can say on strings are nothing but the uh, the letters or you can say the characters written inside the Uh, uh, it can be a single quote it can be a double quote it can be a triple quote right so these are the strings right so for example like you can see here that I have written the all the things over there right sometimes you have a dot string too like this Okay, so I hope things are clear to you right till now what we have discussed on. Okay, now uh, the things what you are using you need to check right the last class I uh, hope we have done it like import the assess module and then looking on to the like what is the system version you are using. So I am using 3.7.6 over here. 
and for getting the system versions you can use the system version underscore of info there we get the results right so things are easy over here Now it is easy, right? And if I say that uh, the user wants a cube of something, right? Let's say the user has given you the uh, radius kind of thing, right? You have been given the radius from the user and you have been asked to find the circumference or the area of the circle. Let's say the user has given some radius. So R would be the radius, I'll be saying as input. And I'll say it as integer input or, or you can say radius can also be in the decimals so we can take even the floor enter radius that is being done right now you can print area would be equals to what I will find the area of the circle pi r square right so you need the pi value so if you don't know what you do is we'll be importing a module called as mathematics let us import math so we'll say here that or i'll say that i want only the pi value so i'll say from math import pi value right so i'll say it's pi r square Right, so area would be pi r square, what is the r value would be giving and r of the square and this is multiplication. When I run this I say the radius is 3.7, so immediately I get the results that is area is equal to 43 point something like this. Clear to everyone. Okay, now uh, if I want to see only the like uh, the two decimal places, what I'll do is I will be using a function called as round off. Right, so I'll say round this value to up to two decimal places so the things would be 4.6 66.48 right so rounding up to something like 32 point some digits right so if i say that i want to round it up so round it up to four decimal places so it would be like this if i say three or one so one would be 32.5 if i say to three three would be 32.457 like that right so I hope things are clear to you all, right? What the types are there? What are the data types you, you have learned till now? How you can differentiate between the variables and all and how you can take inputs and how you can see and things, right? Okay. If I say that there is something inside a string, okay, like that it has been made. Like this, okay. If I say strings, now, there are some characters, right? So what are the number of characters inside the string? If you want to see, we can say the length function calculates the character inside the strings. So that gives 36. Now that is included the space also, including the space, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five words. You can say as five approx values to every of them. And like that we can have the things, okay? So I hope things are clear to you, right? Now uh, you would be getting an assignment and you would be going it through. So if you are having any doubts, you can ask. Yeah, quick. Anyone having any doubts regarding the things, whatever we have discussed for today? And also would we'll be looking onto the assignment operator. Let's go with this also today. And then I'll be giving you the assignment. See, assignment operator is something where you assign values basically, right? So if I say that x is equals to 5, that means I'm assigning the value of x to as the 5. Now, if I say that x is equals to x plus 5, now that means that x is having 5 now, right? And I am going to add more 5 to this, right? So I can say, just say uh, that is x plus is equals to 5. That means adding 5 to x, that's it. So x now becomes as 12. If I want to uh, multiply it by 5, what I'll say is x multiplied equals to by 5. 
that is x now it becoming as 50 right so now i say x divide divide equals to 2 so obviously x is going to be 25 right if i say x divide to the power of equals to 2 they get 625 that is 25 to the power of 2 basically okay now x divide equals to the power of 5 so we'll find x to be 25.0 all right so i hope things are clear to you right how we are going to discuss the more facts we'll be going with tomorrow's session okay so till then you would be getting an assignment today today is the first day so i'll only giving you one assignment to go through right and you can go with that so let's say this is your uh, today's assignment I'm sharing the file